It's gonna offer some general advice on restoring pianos, working on pianos. A lot of things. Always protect your safety, take the time to wear eye protection. I use rubber gloves, not just to protect my hands from dirt, but to increase the grip on the parts so they don't fall out of my hand by mistake. So rubber gloves, little surgical gloves, play an important role just for a good grip. I'd say do the work when you are fresh mentally and not fatigued. Um, working on pianos if you're upset or angry or displeased with how things are going, if you're tired, very bad things can happen. So you want to make sure that when you're doing this, that you're, you've really got it together in your emotions and your feelings. And, and go slow. Another thing is understand that a piano is kind of unique because most of the time, if you're going to be a workman or a craftsman, you're going to like do a single thing, like put a seat on a bicycle or put on a chain. Then you go on to something else. It's not like that with piano. If you do key sticks, you're going to do 88 of them. If you do weapons, you're going to do 88 of them. If you're going to do hammers, you're going to do 88 of them. Everything that you do, other than the case, you're going to do over and over and over and over and over again. That you've probably never experienced before. And it takes a certain flow and mindset to deal with that level of work. I don't think anybody ever said piano. Restoration was easy. Probably the hardest parts are the mental parts, just to keep keep a focus and a positive attitude and enjoyment. I would also you know, remind yourself of your goal on a regular basis and try to celebrate small victories. And I would put up index cards with particular types of groups of work that were completed and then have a tea when I was done or, you know, go get a cookie or some treat for completing something like redoing capstans or working on the key sticks and uh, try and enjoy the process and make it kind of fun. Don't assume that the last technician or the other technicians that worked on the piano did the work right. Uh, one piano I just completed, the 1883, the former technician took every single drop screw and backed it out to the maximum possible. He didn't understand what it did. That meant that the action could not be set. I had to get in and I was like, why am I having trouble setting lead off? And it's because the because the drop screws were way, way wrong. So you can see a lot of things done improperly. So take a good look at what's going on and don't assume it was done right. Also, when you see something in the piano like position of felts on weapons, you might say to yourself, well, you know, shouldn't the hammer shaft come down and kind of touch it all the time? No. If the piano shows that when you take it apart that they're not touching, they probably are not supposed to touch. So, you know, you may not be familiar with what you've seen before, and a lot of what you're going to see is correct and within spec. Certainly get to specifications for Steinway. Find specifications for what the settings are supposed to be, whether it's key dip of half an inch or a little less or you know, if you're looking at let off, maybe let off is going to be a, a, a 32nd of an inch or between a 32nd and a 16th. There are some uh, uh, just plain specifications. Another piece of advice is to stick with the same physical ergonomic skill set and just keep doing that until they're done. You'll find that the work you do on the first hammer head or on the first weapon is not as good as the fifth and not as good as the tenth and by the twentieth you're going to be pretty good at it. So one thing is um, just to give your body a chance to master fully a particular skill set whether that's felting 
of the uh, you know the, the felts at the or or using yarn to improve the felting at the bottom of the whipping or uh, whether you're adjusting let off or whether you're we're cleaning up capstans on the key stick or you know whatever repetitive thing you're going to do over and over and over again so break it down and do that one particular skill if there's things that are complex like when you rebuild weapons do the the one sector work on the hinges do all the hinges then come back and clean them all up then come back and and rebuild the the felt at the bottom you do that because it's a very tough skill set and requires a lot of hand-eye coordination and motor neural memory uh, so you want to give your body every chance to really master it and do as well as possible the big difference between really good craftsmen i think and ones that aren't so good just beyond basic ability to think and, and work with hands is that a good tech's going to go back and they're going to check every single thing they do so if you set regulation, go back and do the whole thing again. Just start over again and just inspect everything. If you do some work on hammer shanks on the hinges, go back and look at every single one and make sure that it's absolutely done the way it should be done. Because what you're gonna find is you'll forget something. You might forget to do one. You know, you got a phone call or you had lunch and it got into the done box and it wasn't done or I'm just saying you're going to find that some things were, were not done. you got to get in and do them. So it's your quality control checking that's going to catch that. And it requires a lot of patience to do a huge job and then go back and do it again, including cleaning up a case. Go back and do it again after you do it. And what you'll find is you'll catch a few things that could be done a little better and it builds the right attitude, which is really the attitude of perfectionism. Just do the job as very, very best that it can be done. Understand that a piano restoration is no better than the sum of the individual actions that you took. It's how well you did cleaning up the key sticks, how well you did setting up the regulation on the key bed, how well you did putting down the felt. All these add up into the aggregate, aggregate quality in your work. So it's nothing more than the sum of the individual parts of the work you do. So that's why the standard on the individual parts that you work on has to be absolutely very, very high. Um, or, or you won't get that result that you want, which is a beautiful sounding piano from yesteryear. That's a piece of history and unlike anything else, you know, as far as that goes. I would also say that the best way to approach repair of anything on a piano is to understand its function. If you understand why let off is important and the role it plays, and of course what is let off, it's when a hammer comes up and it's going to hit the strings, but the key doesn't drive, the, the key that you press doesn't drive the hammer into the string. It drives it up close and then the just the movement that the hammer had takes it up into the string and, and uh, because if it actually jams it and drives it right into the strings it's going to dampen them. So there you go. Uh, you you want to understand the function and to help you understand the function of anything you can go on YouTube and just watch as many videos as you can. I think I've got 330 posted but it's not all work that's done on pianos. I didn't replace the soundboard, didn't string it but other than that it was all there. There's many, many other good video groupings. Mine is called, it's a channel restoring an old Steinway piano. Some things can't be purchased. It's, it's hard at an affordable price to get a rebuilt piano. They are so expensive when they're done right. And uh, you can do it yourself with a pretty inexpensive unit that needs to be rebuilt but you will want to be careful that the soundboard still has a crown and you'll need to look that up to understand because if it's got a bad soundboard, uh, that's going to be pretty major surgery. And the pin block is extremely important. Are the strings still holding their pitch? Even an old piano should be fairly close to its pitch. And when a note isn't 
fairly close, that means that the uh, pin is loose in the, in the pin block. And that's going to have to be dealt with either by shooting it with CA glue, or sometimes you can drill them out and put in a sleeve. Sometimes you can drive in a bigger pin, but you will definitely be dealing with that problem. I don't know that I would say that I enjoy piano restoration. It is so demanding physically and mentally that it isn't, I would say it's rewarding. And the, the big advantage you get by learning to work on your own piano is that you will understand what's wrong and how to fix it with your piano from the time you're done on. So you have something happening while you're playing, like you may say, I, this, this string's out of tune. <laughs> you'll know, and you'll know how to fix it. And you might say, this, I, this doesn't feel right. I think the knuckle is probably out of shape here a little bit on the underside of the uh, you know, hammer shank. And, You'll, you'll know that. You'll be able to go in and, and, and fix it. Uh, I'd say that the rewards are huge, you know, just in terms of enjoyment of a piano and your own confidence in your instrument. It really is a wonderful thing to understand the instrument that you play deeply and to be able to work on it. Understanding that the world you're in in the beginning is I don't know what to do. Everything that you touch in the beginning, you're like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so you have to have a plan and learn a little bit. And you can read books that, that, that can help. Watching YouTube videos. You can call Steve Howard at Howard Piano Industries. He's very helpful in just answering questions. You're going to need some help probably to help figure out stuff. But uh, these are just some thoughts that can help you on your journey. And I certainly wish you the best of luck. And I do encourage you to, to do it if you're considering it. Get yourself a Steinway piano, use genuine Steinway parts, and uh, wherever possible, and top quality suppliers.